situation because you're like, okay, I'm comfortable. Then it turns into a form of TV. Instead of actually saying, hey, I want to get out and do something, you go, well, I'm going to just sit in the house and watch him in the house. So subconsciously, your mind is in the house. Right? What's good, Grit? So consciously, subconsciously, your mind is in the house. Your spirit is in the house. And you still don't be wanting to go outside. So today, once again, we're going to tackle mental illness and depression. So one of the things that we got to stop confusing, well, not confusing, but one of the things we got to stop putting in the same category is mental illness and depression. If you mentally ill, nigga, you retarded. You just mentally retarded. Nigga, they ain't got shit to do with depressed. If you're depressed, you're more definitely completely healthy, but you're just depressed at the situation. I'm tired of niggas talking about, yeah, but you know, you don't know nothing about mental illness and depression. No, nigga, you retarded. You retarded and you retarded. That's it. Ain't no, 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 stop trying to mix it together. No, nigga. If you're retarded, you're retarded. Something wrong with you. Okay, just say, hey, guys, you know what I'm saying? I'm full-blown retarded, and I'm sad because I'm retarded. Okay, let's say that. But when you're depressed, you're a normal human being. You're just depressed at a scenario. Okay? So first, most foremost, let's... Let's not put those things together. Actually, I can't even do this like this. I got to change the setting. I don't like the setting because I noticed that the depressed people going to run from this because it's outside. So they're going to find a way to say, you know what? I don't want to hear what he has to say. So I'm going to get out of here. So I'm going to go back in the house so I can talk to some depressed people who in the house because they feel more comfortable with their setting. Come on. Ah. Ah. But yeah, like I was saying, right? So those are the things we gotta stop putting in the same category. We got to stop putting depression and mental illness in the same category, right? Because they're two different things. What's up, big dog? No, they didn't cut my lights off. cut my lights off but it's windy than the son of a bitch they most definitely doing that i'm always seeing people say shit like yo you know you know nothing about mental illness and you know nothing about depression like so listen up this mainly applies to non-black people my nigga if you retarded you retarded and one of the reasons why you depressed is because you ain't accepting you retarded. If you know you're retarded and your mom know and everybody know, then just accept it. So no, you know what? I'm retarded. Because that's the difference between, you know, other races and black people. Right? When a black nigga retarded, nigga, you better get your retarded ass outside, go play kickball. Black mama, your retarded ass ain't about to be sitting in the house all day. You better take your dumb ass outside. Right? Black parents. But there's there's something that
causes depression on a large scale. And if you look at, come on, if you look at, Oh, it's super, 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 super windy. Sorry. Big dog, come here. Dad, take me to school. Oh, you said you didn't want to go. They're not doing nothing at that class anyway. What? They're not doing nothing at that class anyway. You don't go. You go to what? One day? One, one or two? One day? Oh, you can miss it. Alright, Dad. Alright, hold on. I gotta finish this. Hold on real quick though. Uh, now look. I want y'all to notice how this feels. Look, here come the depressed niggas. Nah, bro, he don't even go to school. It's like a little class he go to where they like do cutting and all that shit. But I ain't driving, nigga, you ain't going. Um, yeah, I homeschooled him, but he go to this little social activity thing every, what, Friday, where it's a bunch of white kids, you know, like, they all do, like, drawing and cutting and all that shit, so I say, yo, son, you know what I'm saying, in order to beat this game, you need to hang around the white kids, he goes, why, dad, they don't like me, well, son, just hang around them, it's gonna make you feel a lot more special, so just go hang around them, <laughs> be extremely advanced and be physically stronger than everybody in class and faster just go hang around be extremely more creative just go hang around and make you love yourself a lot more but um uh going into what i was saying right so you notice how you notice how I came in the house and see how this feels. No, 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 no. Let's get back to what we were talking about, right? Notice how I came in the house and you see how this feels. Right? See how this feels? How it feels. Oh, shit. I'm back in a box. It feels different even looking at me. It feels dark. It makes you feel dark and sad. So look, this is the trap. I keep telling y'all a valuable thing. I'm starting to understand religion and I'm starting to understand the Bible more than ever. The Bible is written in algorithm, I mean algorithm. The Bible is written in allegory. It means a giant punchline, a giant metaphor. So everything itself in the Bible doesn't mean literally. Nothing in the Bible means literally, it's a metaphor. The Bible says you must go through the sun. The Bible is all about the sun, my son. Bro, the sun itself is important, bro. It's important. It gives life to all on the planet. It's important, bro. No, like, like, seriously, bro. It It is, like, the son, bro. The son of God. Like, that's it. That's literally it, bro. Get in the sun. That's it. That's all you have to do is get out and get in the sun. That's it. Hold on real quick.
do something real quick. Buy out. Now, you see how that opened up a little bit? Right? You see how just that fast we opened up a tad bit. It's like, oh, right? Just that bit of access light through the window will change the whole perspective of how it feels. Right? Just that small little, just that small that will change the aspect of how everything feels. It's like a breath of fresh air. So the problem itself, right? Let's get the demons out of here real quick. The problem itself, that fast, right? It's a breath of fresh air, that quick. Just from opening the curtains. Just from opening the curtains, a breath of fresh air. So, the epic design, right, of depression. Depression is created. It is not. And this is what, can you close that? Please, please close it. Depression is created. It is not a mental illness. I keep telling y'all, it's not a mental illness. It is a creation that has brought up on us by the entire design of life that we live in. A house is number one cause of depression. An actual house. No. An actual house is the number one cause of depression. What houses do is they make you comfortable in staying inside of the house. Once you stay inside of the house and you don't get outside in the sunlight, your ideas multiply and your ideas multiply for the worse. Curtains are also a part of the depression plan. They're designed to block light from coming in your house. Listen to me. You wonder why the roofs are designed the way they are designed. An actual roof, the things in the material that are inside, roofing materials, are all designed to block sunlight from coming inside of your fucking house. This is the point. That's why when you go into houses that have big windows and open windows, you feel a lot more happier. You go into these big, you know, big mansion houses by the beach that have big, big open windows, you feel a lot more happier it is the entire house plot that is designed to destroy you to keep you inside a box mentally if you don't go outside and walk outside in the air or even have the windows open daily you're gonna be depressed and then your ideas are gonna multiply for the worse because we are as human beings, with all the movies we watch, all everything we have watched in life, we have fell in love with a more negative mentality. So when we have negative mentality and we think negative and then we're inside a box, the negative ideas will multiply, multiply, multiply. And before you know it, you will start creating reasons for yourself as to why you don't want to go outside. You will subconsciously trick yourself into believing that there is a monster out there and you don't want to go out there because something could hurt you. Look. So look, I want to tell you this. If you get online and right now you get online, listen, and you type in the most depressed cities in the world. You know, what they are, you know, the, the most depressed people in the world, it is the, the Asian niggas that go to the forest and kill themselves. You know, that Asian forest, them niggas depressed because there ain't no sunlight out there in China. Seattle, Washington, number one, Washington is another, another one of the most depressed places ever. 
Why? Because there's minimum sunlight. That's why. There's minimum sunlight. All the places where they block out the sun, people are literally depressed, bro. So, you go to London, you go to all these people, and these people are depressed. I'm going to tell you that. Alaska has a lot of sunlight. It's crazy how people think Alaska is always snowing. It's not. I go to Alaska once a year. It's not always snowing. It is actually sunny out there a lot. A whole, it's way more sunnier than what y'all could possibly think in Alaska. Right. So look. Just lay down. Living room. And close the door behind you. All right. Africa has sun, but people are still stressed out because you motherfuckers ain't supposed to be there. That's why people stressed out. Everybody was doing fine when we was living how we should have been living. But when you niggas came and started implementing y'all rules, gold mining the diamonds, all type of shit, slaving niggas, fucking over the country, making people wear clothes, all type of shit, then that's when Africans start getting depressed. Don't talk to me about the homeland. Please don't. We were good before y'all came. Y'all came and fucked it up. So don't don't talk to me about, about the homeland. Don't. But um, going back into what I was saying, right? So getting outside, and if you are afraid to get outside, you must open your windows and sit by the windows a lot. If you can't get to the window, you have to get outside. You have to get outside. That is the number one thing to do. Get outside. Look, now... What you got to notice about life is, right, we not even supposed to be wearing clothes, right? So I'm going to tell y'all the epic is even more epic plot with how the shit works. So we not even supposed to be wearing clothes for one, right? We not supposed to be wearing hats. Because hats also block sunlight from entering your hair and your hair's antenna. So we're not supposed to be wearing hats. We're not supposed to be wearing clothes. We're not supposed to be wearing shoes. Oh, that's kind of wild. We're not supposed to be wearing none of that. Y'all seen that wild shit? But look, we're not supposed to be wearing none of that. Right? None of that. Because there is a cycle, right? Energy is supposed to come through your top, right? Do what it do inside. Go down and release through your feet. And the feet is supposed to connect to the earth. So going deep into that, a street, right? An actual street, just a street, a concrete street also plays a role in your depression. An actual sidewalk, everything, right? Actual sidewalk, first. Your shoes, everything, it all plays a big role in life. We ain't supposed to have none of this. None of it. So look, right? You go deep into that, you go into the entire design plot of a city, a city itself, buildings, large buildings, right? Buildings are also designed to block sunlight, right? You go into these big old cities where you barely get the sun, and then also on top of these big old cities, you get the clouds, the chemtrails, and you get all the extra shit. All this shit is designed to block the sun, bro. Everything is designed to block the sun. And you go into religious aspect, and you go, damn, so maybe we are in hell, right? Because people here that are in control, right? When the, the people... that pretty much are in control in the design and of earth their entire agenda is to do what block the sun that's the entire plot of those here on earth that are in power block the fucking sun that's going to school right 
You go into school, you go into class, you sit inside a desk, a confined desk with hard seats, and that desk makes you feel trapped in. You sit in that desk all day for six, seven hours, right? You get a fucking what? You get like a what? What type of break you get? You get a 15-minute break to go outside and get some fresh air. You come back in. Then you get another 30-minute break. Or it was an hour break, I think. You get an hour break or 30-minute break, and you go outside and get some fresh air. And then you come back in. You sit in a box. And after you sit in a box, you get out of school. Right? You might walk home. You might have practice or something, whatever you got. But nine times out of ten... 80% of the school is going to go home and then you're going to go home and you're going to go back inside another box and sit on the couch. This is the epic setup. Then you wonder what time is school? I want you to think about this. What time? What time is school? It's from 7 a.m. in the morning to 3 o'clock. This is peak hours for the sun, bro. It's peak hours. Peak peak hours you know what they do they let you out at 12 most lunch is at 12 because the sun is at its peak so they let you go to lunch at 12 one of the reasons why they want you to get enough energy just so you can remain woke in the class that's it you get enough juice at 12 just so you can still have enough energy to stay up in the class everything is all part of this plot bro everything right so look what I'm saying to all the people who proclaim they depressed also also you have to go into the point of words in general right words telling yourself I'm depressed will result into more depression if you you ever notice depressed people brag about depressed, like depression is almost a gang. Right? No, I'm, I'm keeping it real. It's damn near a full blown gang. Like niggas be out here repping that shit. Like yo, I'm depressed, my nigga. What's good? No, I'm, I'm serious. People actually be in the world, like. Full fledged. Nigga, I'm depressed, nigga. Nigga, they call me Lil Press Press. Nigga, I'm out here. Nigga, they call me Lil Press Press. Yo, Rich, Richard, you know where we came up at, bro. We from the bottoms. No, niggas be really out, here, bro. Niggas be out here. Nigga, what's the deal? Nigga, my name Lil Depressed. Nigga, I'm out here. Nigga, I'm sad. No, for real. My nigga, if you get on Twitter right now and say depression not real, you could, look, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm going to get to that reason. Hear me out. So look, if you get online right now, you could have, look, you could, you could have zero followers. I'm talking about you could have one followers. One followers, two followers. You could be following three people. If you get on Twitter right now, right, you get on Twitter right now and type in, literally type in, fuck depression, depression not real. Do you know people get online to look for depressed things? People will find your page just to tell you, you don't know what I'm going through. People will find you. They will They will literally get online and find your page just to tell you. You don't know what I'm going through. Oh, oh. Yo, the depressed niggas be pressing issues, bro. So look. Rule number one, right? Hey, I really hate white people sometimes. Shouts out to all the fans from South Africa. Yo, just to let y'all know, Heroes is actually dropping. 
Let me throw that in there real quick. Heroes is actually dropping on the 29th. So be ready for that. But look, right? So, right? When you really think about this, one thing you got to start doing as a human being is stop telling people I'm depressed. I hate it. I hate hearing the word. Motherfuckers be like, you know, back when I was depressed. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Back when you was depressed, what are you talking about? How do you just, like, look, the more you say the word and the more you agree with the word, the shit will literally, it'll go inside your head, bro. And then when the word go inside your head, it'll create an idea. The word itself is a spell. First and most foremost, you ain't never supposed to admit to nothing. I mean, my, my mom used to tell me, right, this one, and this one thing why I always respected religion, because religion is kind of like a depression blocker, right? That's why I fuck with religion in so many ways, even though I don't participate in it. I fuck with it because... I remember when my mom used to be going through some shit and she used to hurry up and go in the name of Jesus, AKA the son of God. I ain't let nobody get me down today. My mama, that was my mama. Dear Heavenly father, I ain't letting none of these bad spirits come in my house today. Not today. That was my mama. On the set, man, look, I remember one time, Mama Food Stamps ain't come. Richard, you know we had it tough. Hey, y'all, follow my boy Battlestar. That's one of my childhood friends. We grew up together. He could, he could vouch for everything I'm saying. We grew up together. Look. One day, yo, I'm getting chills in my body, bro. One day, mama food stamps ain't come. And on top of mama food stamps ain't come, we was already hungry from last month. Mama had six kids. Seven, because two of them wasn't even her. They was, I don't know who kids them was, but she would take care of them. On God, the food stamps ain't come. You know what we ate for breakfast? Good vibes. Oh, my mom, and mama come in there and say a prayer. I said, Dear Heavenly Father, you going to get us through it. Everybody be happy. Make sure we all in this together. Oh, God, mama come in there and give us a good old prayer. Have us feeling full. Now, y'all go outside and play. Oh, God, we go outside, drink some water hose water. Go outside, get some water hose water on oh God, because water hose water was the bomb. I don't give a fuck about no Aquafina. I don't give a fuck about no alkaline water. I don't give a fuck about no Fuji. Nothing what you talking about. Water hose water. On oh God, mama had us full off the prayer. On oh God, mama finished talking. I feel like I ate a big old breakfast. I'm outside with it. Bitch, who would have played hide and seek? That's why, to me, Tupac is one of my favorite artists ever just because the song Dear Mama, right? Right? Just working with the scrap she was given and Mama made miracles every Thanksgiving. That line right there resonate with me beyond infinity, bro. You know how many Thanksgivings we ain't have, man, Bitch, my mama made a turkey out of a loaf of bread. How you do that? Mama made a whole turkey out of a loaf of bread one time. Man, all it's Thanksgiving, man, all we had was some bread in there. Oh, God, I don't know where the turkey came from. But sad. Man, look, let me tell you what my mama did, my nigga. 
She, we, she, we came in the living room on God. We prayed. After we prayed. After we prayed. Mama went in the kitchen, got the bread, got the bag of bread on God. She put all the bread in the water. Look, put the bread in the water, made it moldy, right? Boom, put the bread in the water on God. She put all her little seasoning, flour, all that in the bread. Boom, boom, boom. All the shit, all, you know, you black people, they might not have no food, but we always got some seasoning in the cabinet. Oh, God, you got some lorries, some lorries, you know, the lorry seasoning sauce and pepper, some flour. Because black people always got a bag of flour because, you know, we eat our chicken. On the set, we always got a bag of flour somewhere in the kitchen because, you know, we need that for the chicken. Bam. On oh God. So she mix up the flour, the lorries, all that. Boom. She whipping. She whipping. Man, she got the shit, turned it into goop. On oh God, she scoped it a turkey. You know the lorries. She sculpted a turkey out of bread mush on God when they put it in the oven and baked it. On God, we had like a turkey, like a bread baked turkey. So when Tupac say that line, working with the scratch she was given and mama made miracles, everything's given, that line hit me to win. Like, you don't understand how much that line hit me. So what I'm saying is this. Growing up where I grew up at, I've learned you do two things in life. You make the best out of whatever you got, and you take your ass outside. That is the greatest thing in the black community. Take your ass outside. That is one thing, mama. When you in the house, look. When you in the house, a black, oh, that's, I just took it off my leg. Put it right there. A black mama will not let you stay in the house and be sad. That is what white parents do. Mom, I'm going to my room. And then you go in your room and then you be sad and then you multiply your sadness. Then before you know it, you turn to a school shooter. A black parent will not, I repeat, a black parent will not let you run upstairs and slam your door. I'm going to my room, mom. No, the fuck you ain't. You're going to take your ass outside. I'm going to my room, mom. You and your room going outside. You and your room going outside. Oh, God, your PlayStation to be outside on the porch. Keep playing with mama. Man, black mama not going for that. I wish you would slam a door in the black house. Oh, God, you'll get your ass beat up. Binky, you know, ain't no... Binky, was we outside all the time? We, My nigga... Yo, on oh God, I wish you would slam a door in a black mama. I wish you, look, you talking about, mother, I'm sad and I'm going to my room. You know what a black mama would do if you did that? That, she going to come in here with one of them. She going to, look, he know, look. Black mama going to come in here with one of these. Huh, here, huh, here, it's yours. You know what's up? Look, he right on, he, look, I told you my family so tapped in, he already knew, he knew to bust through the door with the spatula. Look, he ain't even from the hood, it's in his blood. Look, look, he, oh God, I, I can't make this up. I can't make this up. I, I can't make this, I can't. Look, he already knows. Come in the room, bust through the door, swinging whatever item you got. That's a black mama. What? What? <laughs> hey, 
Hey, go in there. Go to mommy. Go watch. Go close the door, too. Look. The timing. Look, my nigga. The timing of that shit was wild, bro. That's how you know I'm really in my bag right now. Because the universe working in my favor. Yo, the timing of that shit was epic. Yo, that's wild. That's no almost some real shit. I'm really cause I'm really speaking from a genuine place right now. So the universe itself just was like it it calculated an algorithm. Oh God, he came through the door with the spatula. Man, I don't know what that was. Oh God, he bust through the door swinging. That's exactly what a black mama would do if you ever went into your room talking about I'm depressed. Look, ain't no depression in the black family. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Oh, yeah? What? What are you doing? Say hello. Say hello. Look, in the black family, ain't no depression. It don't work. We don't allow it. Even the retarded niggas who are mentally ill, we still don't allow it. Look, all all jokes aside, my nigga. All look, all jokes aside. And I got two of my childhood friends in here. My nigga Richard, which is Battlestar, and my nigga Bink is in here right now. These are my childhood friends. We was outside our whole life. I didn't know what sadness is. We was outside, man. I didn't know. Oh, God, Bink, you know we didn't have, Bink, I ain't have nothing coming up. Binky, y'all had a little son, oh God, I used to couldn't wait to get the Bink how they had the go-karts and all that type of shit, but Bink Daddy was smart. We ain't, we didn't all have smart daddies. Bink D, Big D had, he had a plan. He said, he knew all our parents wasn't like that. Right? That's what I'm trying to be for my generations, right? Like how Bink Pops was, he knew, okay, we in the hood, we gonna get these things, oh God, we got this, bam, I'm gonna maneuver like this, we get this, bam, bam, right? But look, for the most part of my childhood life, on oh God, we lived in the new homes, bam. I, man, the new homes was like epic for me. Oh God, like, I used to wake up, I used to walk out my door, on oh God, I used to walk to the corner, I say, okay, if I go right, I could go play basketball with Balo, Bado, Sergio, Gabriel, and all my Mexican niggas down that way. If I go left, Binky and Keefy and all them that way. All right. On oh God, if I skip Keefy them and go through the gap, on oh God, Monique and all them in the apartments over there. If I skip the apartments, on oh God, I could go to the hood, chop and the baby L and everybody over there. Man, it was epic. It was epic. A nigga, I, look, I never... On oh God, then boom, I say, all right, bam, they playing basketball 102nd on God on the low court. Man, hit the gate. We out there. We playing basketball on the on the eight-foot courts for literally hours. Man, I didn't know. I'll be dead. It was too much. Look, my nigga. Get outside, bro. Get out. The problem with this era, people ain't getting outside. Oh, God, we had plenty of things to do. We had plenty of, man, we played kickball. We played marbles. We played, man, get out. High go seek. Get outside. Oh, man, get outside. We was outside until the sun dropped. And when the sun dropped, we still outside. Get outside. 
You niggas are sad and depressed because you stay in the house. Riding bike, we was riding bikes, skating, rollerblade. Oh, man, look, I, when I was younger, when I, look, when I got older, I used to be sad that I didn't have nothing when I got older. When I got older and I moved out here to Orange County and I started to see these rich kids, I never traded my childhood for this shit. Never this bullshit. Oh my dead granny, rest in peace. This rich neighborhood shit, this shit, some demonic shit. Nobody come outside, nobody play with each other, nobody talk to each other. Nothing out here. Everybody going to the house by 6.30. Nothing. People ain't outside in the morning. Nothing. No, y'all just, y'all see me on my gram. I just posted a video. I was outside by myself. Oh, God. All the parks be empty. Nothing, bro. Nothing. Nothing. My nigga, yo, my, my man just said some of the wildest shit ever. He said a rock fight on the set. We used to have rock fights. Oh, my dead resting. We used to have full-blooded rock fights. <laughs> you know we wasn't trying to be depressed if you went to the lowest of having a rock fight. I'm talking about on oh God, you have rock fights when you don't have no more options. It's like, all right, damn, nobody want to play high go seek. Nobody want to play football. Nobody want to play. All right, oh God, we about to have a rock fight. Wham! Hey, my nigga, how was we blocking rocks with bare hands? Nigga, I'm talking about crap. We was having rock fights. When he bumped into me, I was. Hey, bro, nigga had bean. Sh I just showed my son how to make a bean shooter. He had no idea. What's that? On oh, God, you go cut the top off the milk carton. On oh, God, you know the, the yeah, gallon of milk <laughs> or a gallon of milk or water bottle or whatever. Cut the top off, leave some space a little bit. Go get you a water balloon. Put the water balloon on the back. Put the rubber band on the back. Go get you a pack of beans. On oh, God, you out here. You niggas out here playing Call of Duty on oh God, we play bean shooter warfare. Y'all out here playing Call of Duty in the house of Fortnite, bitch. We was in the streets, first person bean shooter. Fuck you talking about. We was really in the streets, real live Call of Duty bean shooter. Man, you know who had the coldest bean shooters, Bink? Oh, God, Chop, a cold nigga. He had scopes and all type of shit on this bean shooter. He oh, God, because Chop was cold. Chop always been a cold nigga since we was younger. Oh, God, we having a bean shooter war, man. Chop come over there. He got he got two balloons on the back. He had all type of attachments. He had all, he had Ninja Pro, nigga, Hardline Pro, all type of shit. Oh, God, Chop had... Chop had all the assets. Oh, man, how you get that? Oh God, he had a double. He had double. He had a double water balloon on this shit with like a special colorful rubber band. What does that mean? And his thing had an aiming device on it. Oh God, I said, oh, he didn't leveled up. Oh God, he had the bean shooter with the perks. He had the perks. Oh, God. He steady creeping. We never seen him. He had Ninja Pro on, a lightweight, heavy. He had all the hardline pros. Oh, God. My nigga. Bro, so this is what I'm saying about my childhood, right? When I grow, I, I live in Orange County now, and I see these kids be sad, niggas be talking about they depressed and all this shit. That and didn't I'm exist. To, and I'm having, and I'm trying to have fun. 
You know, I got a black son that got genetics of the hood, right? This world ain't for him. It don't fit these kids. Man, my son been on the play all day. They don't know how to do that out here. My son be want to play all day. They don't do that out here. It's sad. Nobody said nothing. They don't do it out here. It's sad. Especially this person. It's sad. It was really, really, really sad. So, going back to what I said, when you when you think about people out here, right, especially in this area, they have creative reasons as to why they don't like to go outside. They'll find every excuse in the world not to get up. I'm not dressed. I'm not this. I'm not that. I haven't did this. I haven't did that. Yeah, I need to do that. I need. They'll find every reason to not go outside. I don't give a fuck what I'm doing. I'm outside. I don't give a fuck what I got on. I don't care if I'm not matching. I don't give a fuck about it. I'm outside. I don't care about none of that. Why? Because I never matches. I remember one time we at the homie house. I'm like, yo, man, let's go talk on the porch, bro. He talking about, nigga, I got to put on the right socks. My nigga, what you talking about? What you talking about? You got to put on the right socks. What you talking about? Keep your ass in the house, bro. I'll be back. My nigga, the number one cause of depression is lack of sunlight there is no other way around it i don't care what no doctor say i don't care what no t- i don't care what nobody say the number one cause of depression is not going outside is no other nothing nothing also when you outside you have to have a free mentality to absorb the nutrients because you can go outside and still block yourself you can go outside and still be blocked like, like if you take negative energy outside and you look at all the negative aspects of outside, you'll always block. You'll still block yourself. So you have to go outside and be like, okay, I don't give a fuck. I'm out here. Hey, hey, hey. Right? That's why you know what people I really like? I like the rollerbladers. You ever see niggas on skates with headphones that just be having a good time? Why can't regular people do that? What you afraid of how people going to perceive you? I remember one time my man Battlestar, right? I remember one time. Yo, you remember? You remember, Rich? You remember that one time we seen you at Venice Beach, right? I was chopping it up with you, and I remember the homies was like, "Damn, man, like Richard, what's up with Richard?" And I'm like, "Y'all don't get it, man. My man up here enjoying the sun." Oh God, sometimes you just got to let go of life. You got to let go of all. They know. I'm almost done. Take them to the living room. I'm not telling you to get Sometimes you got to let go of this fake life that we live in. Stop, Lenny. Sometimes you got to let go of this fake life that we live in. You got to let go of all this shit and go get in the sun. Oh God. Let go of all this shit, all the fake shit, all the fake clothing, all the getting fly, all of you got to let go of all that shit. Go get in the sun and find yourself, bro. Bro, listen to me, y'all. Get outside. And if you in the area where it ain't sunny, still get outside, man. Because look, clouds are not real. Yes. Uh, uh, Destiny. Yeah. Okay. Right. Clouds are not real. They are all designed and they're all part of the block the sun. They're not real. No cloud has never been real from we were a child. You've been seeing the little rocket fly with the little smoke trailing out the back. You've been seeing that shit since we was a child. Every fucking cloud is created. None of them were real. There ain't no, it's zero natural clouds. None. It is only supposed to get light and dark. That's it. Nothing. Ain't no clouds, bro. I'm sorry to break that to you. We've been seeing the airplane with the trail on it our entire life. There is no such thing as clouds, bro. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Yeah, you shouldn't know that. Clouds are designed. Shut the fuck up! Close the door. Damn.
clouds are not real. Okay? They're not. They've never been real. So, there is a way to extract sun through the clouds. Right? All you have to do is go outside with positive energy and you can extract straight through the clouds, bro. Listen to me. Positive energy, you can extract straight through the clouds, bro. If you go outside, look. Just just try this for me. I want you to really try this for me. Go outside. Even if it's cloudy, go outside with positive vibes. Right? Let's just go outside with positive vibes. Speak to everybody. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey you. Hope your day is going well. Positive vibes. Boom, boom. Go outside and get wiggly in the world. Oh, God. Go outside and get real wiggly in the world. I'm talking about just wiggly, like, to where you just like, hey, I'm in my groove. I'm in my zone. Hey, how you doing? Boom, boom, boom. Hey, hey. People going to start looking at you weird. Right? People going to start looking at you weird. People going to be like, what type of, why are you so happy? Gotta get loose. You start looking at you. Why are you so happy? Right? If you if you go outside right now and just start dancing on the corner, you know cars gonna be driving looking at you. Why the fuck he dancing outside? That is not normal. He looks too happy. If you go outside right now and just start dancing on the corner by yourself, people are actually gonna look at you like you're doing something wrong. Look, you got to get out. E look, even if it's cloudy, it's not jealousy. It is a glitch in this matrix. That is not something you're supposed to do because everybody is depressed. So depressed people see people with a, a spirit and a soul and they automatically go, oh shit. I wish I could do that, but I can't. That's how you extract Positive energy right through the sun. Clouds cannot block positive vibes. You get in the world, get you some rollerblades, get you some skates, get you a longboard or whatever. Get you some headphones, put on some music and get in the world, bro. That is it. Get in the world, bro. I'm telling you, it is the most healthiest shit you could do. Get in the world. Because the more you pull yourself from the world, the more those ideas double up, 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 double up. Then you create the idea that you shouldn't go outside. And then once you create the idea that you shouldn't go outside, then what happens? You're not outside. And then once you're not outside, what happens? Exactly. Exactly. It's a lot of shit, bro. It's a lot of shit. Like, it's a lot of shit happening. It's a lot of ways we're blocked. It's a lot of ways that we block ourselves, right? We say he said what? You got depressed from a heartbreak? Look, my nigga, I'm gonna tell you a valuable thing. If you or if your heart has been broken in any way or form. Look at life like this. That is not a bad thing. No, nah, hear me out. Your heart been broken by a bitch. That ain't a bad thing. That's a good thing, my nigga. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. You got to look at it. 
Right? It's a good thing. I'm not done. So can you please be quiet? I'm not done. Just stop. I'm not done. It doesn't matter. I'm not done. Just stop. All it is is a pimple. You pop them and move on to the next. Yeah, it's going to leave a little mark and it's going to be swole a little bit. But hey, my nigga, your face going to clear up. So you got to look at those scenarios like that. The universe is going to wrap everything around. Right? It's going to wrap everything in a scenario and everything is going to happen how it's supposed to happen. There is no such thing as it should have happened this way or it should have happened that way. Nothing is should have. There is no such thing as should have. If it happened, it happened. There is no, there is no such thing as, well, what if, ain't no what if. If it happened, it happened. There is no way to back turn it. So you have to look at life like this. Okay, boom. Right? I get it. I'm hurt. It does hurt. But it was the best thing for me. Chop, move on, focus on one with self, get outside. That's it. That's literally it. Now, all of these other ideas and all of these other magnify ideas come from movies we watch. Most of the time, nine times out of ten, the way we act is not how we want to act. It's been socially installed through the television, through TVs and all type of radios and songs and everything else we listen to. That will determine how we act when something bad happens. You notice like when a baby, when something happens to a baby... The baby kind of looks at the parent first to determine if the baby should scream or if the baby, the baby will go. And then when the parent goes, oh, are you okay? And then the baby goes, eh. Because none of the socialized ideas have been installed in the child yet. So the child don't really even know how to react. So most of our reactions are based on the things we see. It is an epic setup, right? The programming is real into that into that level so deep. So look, based on how we perceive things will determine how we react. Life in general. You never seen an animal go, Well damn, my nigga, she had a baby by the other silverback gorilla. Well, nigga, I'm just gonna sit in the trees and cry. You never seen an animal do that. Nigga, you ain't never seen a motherfucking nigga lying go, uh, 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 you know. Oh, my bitch would have had another lion prize. I'm just going to just... Uh, rah, rah, nigga, rah. You never see the goddamn lion just give up hope. Bitch, hey, move on through the jungle. Nigga, you got work to do. Oh, God. So, look. Get outside. That is it. We got 58 seconds left. I'm going to tell you this. Get your ass outside.